Yes, welcome into Sports Bit. Betty and Insight today, weekend preview edition. We got the three big playoff games in the association tonight. Let's make it six out of seven with the play of the day for you, the viewer out there. Bad beats, bad bets, bad for the books. And how about this? Week one of the NFL already up. The schedule came out last night. We'll hit that in a second. Oh boy, what a vicious beat if you had the Pacers, the Cavs, with the biggest second half comeback in playoff history. They were down 25 at the half. They bench Kyrie and Love, and LeBron takes over. We've had seven 40-point triple doubles in playoff history. Two have happened in the last 24 hours. Cavs get the win, Teddy. Yeah, and okay, tied for the, the biggest playoff comeback in NBA, uh, biggest comeback in NBA playoff history. Remember that Clippers comeback win over the Grizzlies? Uh, what was that, about five years ago now? Uh, but This was second half. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, they're down 25 with the break. They're down seven going in the fourth, and they win the game by seven despite a bunch of missed free throws in the final seconds. Uh, that was making us nuts, uh, Polly. Obviously, with a ticket on Cleveland minus the deuce, in our pocket and for the uh, uh, sports bid viewers as well. But look at the graphic. As you mentioned, Love Irving in the fourth quarter, zero minutes. Irving left with 4.17 uh, in the third. Cavs were down 18. He never saw the floor again. Love left with 2.29 in the third. Cavs were down 13. Uh, he never saw the floor again. The duo combined eight for 29 from the field, and they played absolutely no defense. Meanwhile, LeBron 41 points, 13 rebounds, 12 assists. What are we going to call it, Polly? Was it Cavs bad? I'm sorry, was it Cavs good or Pacers bad? Uh, well, that's, I mean, they held, they had 40 points in the second half, so that's a little bit of both. But in any event, that's a horrible beat, and the Pacers couldn't get it done. LeBron now, what is that, 20 straight first-round playoff wins? I expect him to get the broom out uh, in game four. At William Hill, look at this tweet, David Payne Purdom. Cavs were 25-1 to in-game. They took 46 bets at that price. The largest was $200. That's a nice cash there if you grab the money line. How about one guy was complaining about lack of hockey. You know what? Sorry. It's the lowest rated, rate, lowest rated playoffs in broadcast history in the United States. But in any event, I'll give you a couple here. Chicago and Nashville, the total was five. It was one nothing in the third period. Four goals in the third. That's a vicious push there. Western Conference playoff totals now nine, three, and six to the under. And how about the the uh, Blackhawks? One seed swept, and the Blue Jackets both eliminated on the same day. They went one and eight in the playoffs. They combined for two hundred and seventeen points and a hundred wins in the regular season. And eight beats a one a lot in hockey. But for a one to get swept, and the Blackhawks scored three goals in the entire series. Amazing. How about bad for the books? A 40-cent move on the Red Sox. Kimbrell blew it. They get three in the 10th and beat the Blue Jays 4-1. to Flat-out stink, Teddy. You're down 12 units if you're betting the Blue Jays this year. And, and counting. Uh, I mean, Toronto, you don't want to talk about a rough start. It's been a brutal start. But a lot of bad results for the books last night. This one front and center. You know, Red Sox open minus 145. They closed minus 185. And Chris Sale has been about as sharp as it gets. 80 of his 102 pitches that were in the strike zone. Zero runs, four hits, one walk, 14 strikeouts through eight. Obviously, you talk about uh, Craig Kimbrell costing him the win. Uh, but, uh, of course, given the rules of baseball, that makes Kimbrell the winning pitcher because <laughs> they scored three uh, in the 10th. How about Sale? A 0 0.91 ERA through four starts, 43 strikeouts, 15 hits, six walks. So when you have 43 strikeouts, 15 hits, six walks, <laughs> man, uh, more than twice as many strikeouts as hits and walks combined. That's one heck of an April, and yet he only has one win to show for. We can expect continued betting market support for Chris Sale moving forward. He's been awesome. couple of ba uh, bad for the books here. A 25-cent move on the Rays. They beat the Tigers 8-1 to in a day game. Likewise, the Astros and the Angels under bet from 8.5 down to 7.5. It was a 2-1 to final in that one, Teddy. Another day game. Yeah, I mean, Steven Souza, a, a double, a triple, and a homer for the Rays. They were up 4-1 in the second. They cruised to victory. We're definitely seeing signs of a legitimate home road dichotomy in Tampa Bay already. Betters uh, be aware, and the books obviously took a beating uh, on that one. And, and no surprise that betters were all over Lance McCullers. You know, he's back to full health, uh, and they caught way high on this total uh, on the opener. McCullers, 31 strikeouts versus six walks in his first four starts of the season. The total, as you mentioned, 8.5 to 7.5. It fell three.
And they're not going to rook us. Also bad for the books. The Fisdale rant worked. Memphis ends their nine-game playoff losing streak. They rout the Spurs, and they kept bet. I don't know if they thought they, it was going to be nothing but free throws and get Memphis back in the series, but they pounded that total, bet it up to 188. Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the bad for the books part of this equation was that total. The total got steamed up, uh, and obviously uh, a fast pace from the get-go, and uh, the Grizzlies getting their fair share of free throw attempts uh, this time around. Books took a pounding, took a beating on that total. And of course, we told you yesterday on Sportsbit that San Antonio in Game 3 was the single most public bet in the playoffs thus far. It was. Spurs backers, that was a bad bet. And bad for the Bucks. also. The Bucks bet up to two at home against Toronto. This thing was over in the first quarter. They went 104-77. to Oh yeah, I mean that was a truly ugly first half. Uh, and uh, Bucks bet up from Pickham. Uh, when we recorded the show yesterday, they were said we said nothing but Milwaukee money. That was at one and a half. Got bet up to two, even two and a half in some locations. And big difference. Notice, you know, Toronto, Milwaukee, Cleveland, Indiana. You know, the Cavs they weren't dead when they were down big at the break, but Toronto was a little bit different in the head for the Raptors right now than it is for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And the National Football League schedule came out last night. Week one lines already posted at the Westgate here in Vegas at the Superbook. We start Thursday, September 7th. Patriots open the season at home against Kansas City. They're laying seven. And you see these other games up there and some good matchups in week one. Uh, I can't believe Sunday night the Cowboys are laying six to the Giants. The Giants own them. Yeah, and, and you're, not the, not only, you're, not, you're not the first person that pointed that out. That seems to be one that has stood out for many betters. Of course, let's not forget what a good point spread team Dallas was last year. And in theory, the respect that that home field has now for betters. Whereas a year ago at this time, we were talking about how the Cowboys have very little uh, home field advantage. We talk about lines that have the potential to move. You know, and just, again, this is eyeballing it. Okay, there's a handful of them that I'm not convinced will be there. Philadelphia plus two and a half at Washington. That one, uh, I would expect to see some Eagles money between now and kickoff. Arizona plus two and a half at Detroit. That's another one that I would expect to see some underdog money. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Cardinals go off and pick them uh, or chalk uh, in uh, that ballgame. As you mentioned, Giants, Cowboys, you can anticipate a little bit uh, of Giants money in that one. So that's just a handful that I think have the potential to attract some betting action over the summer months. Many of these lines are going to sit pretty flat between now and week one. Up next, big game breakdown. Can the Celtics get back in this series? Will a one seed get swept in the NBA? We'll get to that up next on Sportsbit. Betting insight today on SBRPicks.com. Go to SBRodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sportsbooks. Back on Sportsbit, betting inside today. Time for big game breakdown. Remember SBR odds, sportsbook review rating guide. Make sure you're betting with a trustworthy shop out there. Game three, ESPN, Friday night. Celtics and the Bulls. Bulls at home, one and a half, 207 the total. Bulls win game one, 106, 102. They blow out the Celtics, 111 to 97 in game two. No zigzag here. How about the line adjustment? Boston was close seven and a half in game two. Now the Bulls are one and a half, and they're minus 270 to win the series, adjusted series price. Boston was minus 525 before the series started. It hasn't happened in a while, but could we see an eight over a one seed? It looks like it could happen, Teddy. Yeah, and, and, and this won't be a Dikembe Mutombo kissing the ball and falling on the court uh, if Chicago wins uh, this series with an eight uh, beating a one. I'm going to just go back to the SBR live odds uh, for a minute. we got a good question uh, in the live chat last night. How much of a delay are those odds on? And the answer is seconds. Uh, it's not minutes, it's seconds. Uh, so uh, unless it's a situation where syndicates are pounding and the screen's going black everywhere, uh, you're likely to be able to find the number you're looking for uh, when you go to SBR uh, and check out the live odds page. It is a very useful resource. So what's, uh, I mean, what's been the difference in this series for Chicago? In my mind, <laughs> Rajon Rondo, man, he still has it. Look at the numbers for the series. 67 minutes. It's not about points. He has 23 points. Not about rebounds. 17 rebounds. It is about assists. He's got 20 dimes. And it is about the lack of turnovers. Look at that. Seven steals, four turnovers. So we're talking about a guy who's almost average a triple-double. 
and a guy who has more steals than turnovers in the series so far. That's high-level basketball, plain and simple. Uh, the cameras are on. Rondo's into it. The Bulls also plus 22 on the boards. They're plus 60 in the six head-to-head -head games this season. Remember that now. The Bulls have killed them on the glass in their 4-2 and two against Boston this year, and they got confidence. I mean, they know they can win this series. They swept Cleveland. They we, With Wade, Butler, and Rondo, they believe they can make a run in the East. And the Celtics not just getting uh, outplayed. They've been out physical so far, and they've lost confidence. 0-5 straight up, 2-3 and three ATS and road playoff games in the Brad Stevens era. Amazing but true, Brad Stevens, 2-10 and 10 all time straight up in the playoffs. Here's Avery Bradley, quote, I looked around a few times in the game. Guys were putting their heads down, I think, getting down on themselves, but as a team, we have to stay together. The other team is looking at that. They're using that as motivation for themselves. I could even hear Rondo like, yeah, they gave up, they gave up. But you can never let a team see that. You have to continue to be positive and go out there and play hard no matter what the outcome is. You know, not to mention Marcus Smart's flipping off his own fans. He got fined by a $25,000 fine, rather. And you got Isaiah yelling at Smart and Crowder. The bickering, not good going into tonight's game. Yes and no. Uh, I mean, uh, let me go back to Rondo for just a minute. Because I got a great quote here from Dwayne Wade. Uh, this quote, I hated him as a competitor. He knew all the plays. He messed up the first option. Then he knew the second option. We were good enough to have a third option. We can go to him and ask him questions because he watches film all the time. And it feels like Chicago has been the more prepared team in this series. But in my mind, this game is all about character. It really is. This is a gut check for the Boston Celtics. They failed the game to gut check. All right. Now, if they have anything, they're supposed to show up in game three. We saw... There are issues, and the issues aren't going to go away. Look, Isaiah Thomas flew to Tacoma to be with his family on Wednesday. So we're talking about a situation where practice time is not going to be there with all the bodies on the floor in order to make those key adjustments. You have mental issues galore for Boston, and yet I don't know why, Pauly. I think they're alive in this game. Maybe it's because I don't trust the Bulls as chalk. I like the Bulls with their backs against the walls. But when they're sitting in the driver's seat, this is a team that tends, strong tendency, to take their foot off the gas pedal. All right. The Boston bench has been horrible so far, and shame on Danny Ainge for not making a move at the deadline. Game number two, live odds, sportsbookreview.com, SBR odds. Check it out. Rockets and Thunder. Rockets lead two games to none. Thunder 2.5 at home, 224.5 the total. Houston won 118-87. to Then the epic clash in game two, 115-111. to Thunder played solid team basketball for three quarters, and Westbrook played hero ball and let him down. Game two, first three quarters. OKC led 89-86. Westbrook was 13-25, 36 points and 11 assists. Others, 20-43, 53 points and 7 assists. Game two, fourth quarter. Houston outscored OKC 29-22. Westbrook, 4 of 18, 15 points, 2 assists. Others, 3 of 11, 7 points, 0 assists. Donovan... And someone in that locker room has to tell Westbrook, pass the frickin' ball. Well, honestly, I, I was baffled that Donovan played Westbrook the whole fourth quarter uh, in that contest, especially at the start of the fourth. Uh, well, he sat him, and the, and the Rockets made a huge run. Uh, but he played the whole fourth quarter in this one. And uh, here's Donovan's quote. I could tell they were starting to gain momentum, and I thought it was important to start the fourth effectively. He wants to be out there the whole time, but as a coach, I have to look at that. Uh, and I wonder, when you talk about the team, you know, we talked a lot about Indiana and their collapse against Cleveland. And I think that some of that has to do with the fact that as a team, there was a little bit of demoralization uh, with what happened in the way they lost the first two games of this series. And with Oklahoma, I worry about that same thing. Steven Adams, quote, we just weren't taking the greatest of shots in the fourth quarter, and they really capitalized on that. It was a combination of things, and our mental stamina needs to be a little better. Now, we said we on a night where he took three shots and made two of them. Now, there was a legit issue, issue in terms of his foul trouble. He fouled out in that ballgame. Look at the numbers. 27 minutes with Adams on the court, they're plus 18. 20 minutes <laughs> with him off the court, minus 22. I like what Dan Tony said after the game, too, about, you know, we'll eventually get stops We'll score 120 a game, and that should be enough. And Harden, it wasn't pretty. We didn't make a lot of shots. We gave him the early lead. 
We had to fight our way back, and we did. We didn't give up. We continued to fight and grind and figure out the way to win, end quote. And they were down 15. And I'll tell you what I like, though. You know, they, they, haven't, they can't get Ryan Anderson going. He was one of eight. But Lou Williams found his stroke. He went off, and so did Gordon. Gordon had 22, and Lou Williams had 21 off the bench. And the bigs are playing well for the Rockets, too. Remember, plus 15 on the boards in game one. Sure. And when we talk about the run that Houston made at the end of the third quarter with Westbrook on the bench, Excuse me, that's bench versus bench, Bolly. And that's an area where the Rockets legitimately have an edge. We saw it in game two. They have the bench punch that OKC can't match. We've got two guys coming off the pine uh, who can score in the 20s in Gordon and, and Williams. And that win for Houston, that's a grown up win. You know, that wasn't just about a night where the shots were falling, the shots weren't falling, they were trailing throughout. And yet, they gutted out a tough fourth quarter and found a way to get victory in a game that, again, they don't have to have it, but they want to have it. That's a sign of maturity from a Rocket squad that may not have had a year ago at this time. All right, up next, we'll get to the late game. Clippers and the Jazz, series tied at one. Let's make it six out of seven with the play of the day on Sportsbit. Betting insight today on SBRPicks.com. Research before you bet. Be sure to check out SBR Picks for the best game predictions, breakdowns, and much, much more. Wrapping up on Sports Pit, betting inside today, Paulie and Teddy. Big game breakdown continues. Go to sportsbookreview.com, check out the betting guide. Clippers and Jazz, ESPN 2, 7 o'clock Pacific. Jazz, Clippers now, 1.5, 197 the total. Jazz won game 197.95. Clippers won 99.91. Gobert out again for game three. Clippers didn't take advantage by going to the basket in game one. They sure did it in game two. Look at this graphic. Points in the paint. Game one, 40 to 42 in favor of the Jazz. Game two, 60 to 38. Quinn Snyder, quote, we've just got to find other ways to protect the paint. That's the challenge. It is what it is. Anytime you don't have a guy that's a defensive player of the year candidate, everyone else has to step up. There's no sense lamenting his absence. We've got to figure out how to do better, end quote. Well, I mean, you got D.O. at the five and Johnson at the four, so good luck. Yeah, it's certainly not an easy matchup for Utah, given the loss uh, of Gobert, but that's not the only problem the Jazz have. I mean, they also have to find a way to get Gordon Haywood better shots. And Doc Rivers, I thought, made a really good move. He put Luke Mabamute, who is, I mean, let's, let's be honest, he is a legit defensive stopper, and he has given Gordon Hayward all kinds of problems in this series. They went head-to-head, but all but 53 seconds in game two, and Rivers set it up that way. Look at the numbers, okay? Hayward on the floor for 38-40, minus 17. Maba Mute, obviously the 50 seconds left, plus 15. Through two games, Utah's best player, with especially with Gobert Hurt, Gordon Hayward, just 12 of 33, five assists, and six turnovers. Uh, here's Chris Paul toting, uh, noting that Hayward still has 20 points in game two. Quote, probably 20 of the toughest points he ever had to get. Yeah, they're doing a heck of a job defensively. Here's what Doc Rivers uh, said about Luke Mabaamute. Luke was terrific. He does so many things. Hayward's one of those guys that you can't get to. You're not going to get to him. You're not going to make him not want to play against you and play hard. You've got to show up each night and turn into that game and that individual game and be ready to play him. This is a matchup that has worked well for the or certainly worked well for the Clippers in game two and well enough in game one in theory uh, to win although they gave that one away at the end all right you don't think this is a big deal uh, I, I do the Clippers have won nine of the last ten trips to Salt Lake City and one of those losses was earlier this year when they blew a lead late it's a tough place to play and I think that's a big deal and for whatever reason the Clippers play well they're gonna have a lot of confidence and know they can win in that building sure and I mean I'm not selling the Clippers short especially uh, without Gobert in the lineup for Utah let's not underemphasize that injury as Quinn Snyder said we're talking about a defensive player of the year candidate that isn't going to play again in game number three and that changes everything that the Jazz want to do but Quinn Snyder's a crafty guy and Utah even without Gobert is still a well above average defensive team I would expect uh, the Jazz to make some pretty good adjustments between game two and game three particularly on the defensive end of the court, Paulie, and that obviously sets up 
for our play of the day. All right, yes, winner yesterday. Never in doubt with the Cavs, right? Sure. Never in doubt. Never in doubt. So let's make it six out of seven for the viewers out there. Buddy number 719, 720. Clippers, Jazz, under 197. They haven't come close in the first two games. I don't think they're going to get there in this one as well. And there was a lot of scramble points. It got Kate crazy there at the end of game one. But uh, you, you were safe if you had the under in that one. So let's continue to ride this as we look for to get three straight unders in the series. And let's make it six out of seven. Hey, huge views. Even though Teddy was sick, uh, Teddy did an excellent job fighting through it this week. But a lot of views the last couple shows with the playoffs. I know the NBA playoffs are a big deal. So tell your friends out here you're getting great information. Have a good weekend. And we're back next week. And we'll look at it. We'll have the round two of the playoffs coming up possibly as well on Sports Bet. Betting insight today on SBRPicks.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>